In a year of unprecedented challenges, organizations were struggling hard to survive. New business models and strategies were made. Transitioning to digital was the only survival. In the next panel discussion, our experts will discuss resetting expectations, how to lead through rapidly changing times. I would like to invite Padmaja Alagnandan, CPO, PwC India, to moderate this discussion. Joining here are the panel of experts, Dr. C. J. Kumar, VP and Head Corporate, HR, Larson and Turbo, Shailesh, A.J. Menis, Senior Director and Head, HR, Hewlett Packard Enterprise India, Kostup Sunalkar, Group Director, HR, Corporate Communications, CSR and General Affairs, Wellspun Group. Hello and welcome to our session. Let me also take this chance to wish you and your families a very happy, healthy 2021 with lots of learning in store. It is uh, indeed an honor to have the opportunity to moderate a panel on a topic which is of so much relevance, right? That of leadership and leadership in changing times. I think the whole topic of leadership has been discussed for centuries and in so many different contexts whether it's in the military, whether it's for institutions, societies, uh, nations, and organizations. And there are so many different perspectives to what it takes to be a leader and a leader in changing times. I think for me personally, one definition that I found resonated with me is that of John Cotter's on leadership as the ability to drive useful change. So the whole context of leadership being relevant to the change you want to drive really comes out. And I think when we look at the last year, uh, I think multi dimensions of change very, very clearly been in place. While many of us have seen different business cycles, I think we can all agree that when it comes to so many different dimensions of change, last year has been unprecedented. So with that, let me introduce the panelists for today's session. I think it's a privilege to be here with people with so much experience on to deliberate on this topic. So let me start with Dr. C. J. Kumar. Dr. J. Kumar, or I think some people call him Dr. C. J. K. He's the Vice President and Head of Corporate Human Resources at LNT. He's been with LNT for 32 years in many different roles, different locations, including the Middle East. Dr. J. Kumar, when I looked at his profile, I think his commitment to learning stands out so much. He has a graduation in economics, a post-graduation in PMIR, another post-graduation in economics. He has a diploma in PMIR. He has an MLS, an MPhil in labor studies, a degree in law, an executive di diploma in HRM, and finally a doctorate degree in leadership. So Dr. CJK, welcome. It's an honor to have you here on the panel. Thank you. Let me move on to our second panelist, Shailesh Menezes. Kailesh is the senior director head of Hewlett Picard Enterprise India. Uh, he has responsibility for about 13,000 employees across the India geography. He's played different roles in his career before joining HP about a decade ago. Shailesh has worked with two other organizations for about 15 years, both in India and in the US. These are IBM and Wipro. Welcome, Shailesh. It's a privilege to have you here with us. Thank you. Thanks, Bud. Let me then move on to our third panelist, Kostub Sonalkar. Kostub is the Group Director, Human Capital Management, General Affairs, CSR, and Corporate Communication at the Wellspun Group. Kostub has uh, over 25 years of corporate experience. He started with the SR Group. He moved to the Future Group, subsequently to PwC. So it's very good to uh, welcome uh, alumnus. And He's also the author of the national bestseller, Fetch Your Own Coffee. I think a lot of leadership lessons in that title, Kostub. Look forward to hearing more about it from you. And thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have you on the panel. Thank you so much. So maybe on that note, uh, let me start with you, Kostub, to get your views. You know, there's so much discussion on leadership, right? Whether it's in the media, whether it's in board meetings, whether it's in sessions like this. So it's an off-mentioned, but not a very clearly defined trait. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. What to you is the essence of leadership and of being a leader? Over to you. 
I think uh, <clears throat> leadership is something which is uh, when when somebody uh, when a, when an individual uh, actually takes up leads with example. And when you say what do you mean by leads with example? Is somebody who takes a group together, I you know puts an idol, uh, you know has has an agenda and aligns people to it. Uh, you know, is is very goal focused. Is a person who is solutions oriented, but is a, is still empathetic. And I guess uh, it it is also situation. It is it is a situation which makes great leaders. I guess uh, it, it, these are these are very there are situations where you know in good times there are leaders who always become you know a part of any of the leadership programs that we actually bring out. But there are the leaders are the ones who actually come out of adverse situations. And I believe uh, those are the, the real leaders. Last one year has taught us so much. You know, there is there is there has been uh, so much that has happened, and those countries have done well. Those situation because of the situation where you had people who have grown up from nowhere to become great leaders. And I think uh, those are people whom we and and the other pieces which I believe bring out the best in leadership when where you can actually learn leadership qualities sports. When you look at sports, and we normally, when you look at corporate India versus vis-a-vis -vis sport or vis-a-vis -vis any other places, we normally tend to believe that leadership is somebody who is a performer is a leader. And I guess that's that's the dichotomy that we've always grown up with. Even in schools or in our education system or in or in corporate India, we always thought somebody who's got the highest GPA is the best captain of the school. And I guess that's so that's so sad. And even when you look at uh, sports, the person who plays the best the is is made the captain of the team but the person who actually rises up the person who takes the team together the individual who has the ability to align everybody to one common cause to make, make sure that you know they are they are together empathy is extremely important the, the amount of the ability to take tough decisions in tough mm -hmm. situations those are the people who make great leaders people who actually make are so uh, you know evolved in the thought when when it comes to solutions orientation i think any leader has to be a great solutions or so, so it has to provide solutions That's because correct. people look up to them when you look at india and and and, and the way we manage covid i guess the way we were prepared the way the uh, in terms of the kind of population that we had the healthcare system that we had the way we managed it no matter what the numbers look like but i guess we managed it better than most and i would i would say that's because of the leadership at the center that we have who actually made it you know who took certain decisions which were in the interest of the country also mm. also even if you look at uh, organizations people where there, there are uh, organizations which have seen great leaders who are thought leader who have you know, who have actually had the ability to get people around them i think people is the key element to making of a good leader is mm. any leader who can get people around who can get the people together and who can take them together towards a common cause i guess they are the ones who actually will make it yes. and uh, and these are the few qualities which i, I thought i think that's that's the plain uh, education doesn't give, give you leadership uh, i guess uh, uh, you know number of uh, uh, you know your position doesn't actually make you a leader it's it's the inert ability uh, which makes you that leader no thanks kasub lot of uh, thought provoking points in there i was actually recalling something which i uh, read and actually believe in a lot that you know leadership cannot be taught but it has to be learned right there has to be that whole self drive to want to develop and also you spoke about solutioning the head you talk about empathy the heart and you spoke about courage need to take tough calls so the head the guts right head heart and gut so it's a real a whole leader who needs to be able to work across different dimensions thank you for that maybe dr jaykumar if i could uh, you know come to you now you've been at the helm of this function in a very large global cross business organization right cross industries and there must be so much of learning that you have seen in your decades with the group so what to you is the essence of the leader from your perspective and everything that you've experienced within lnt thank you <clears throat> thank you very much padmaja at the outset let me thank ethr world for inviting me for this uh, next tech hr summit 2021 the two for a very very interesting and a favorite topic of mine that is leadership in changing times in fact my phd was on leadership so mm -hmm. it was a, it's a very very favorite topic you asked what is the essence first let me try to define uh, leadership there are hundreds and hundreds of definition on leadership but according to me very very simple if i had to put it 
leadership is getting things done through people. Very simple. If I can get things done through people, that's the, the leadership. There are different qualities of leaders which has been researched, written in different forms. Predominantly like a person who has a vision, who has a very, very deep-rooted sense of purpose, builds trust. That, that's, uh, if, if you ask me, one thing which you, which you look at in a leader is that trust is a very, very, we'll talk much about that later. Acts with integrity, uh, encourages others, um, encourages innovation, creativity, develops people, brings the best in the, in the people, etc. So uh, getting uh, straight into some of the qualities of traits of a leader whom, which, which I admire is one is uh, the setting direction, uh, being a role model. So, so everybody looks at, at him as whenever a, a situation arises, how he acts, how he behaves, how he takes decision, how he encourages people, how he inspires people. So people look at him. And even not only today because of COVID or at any point of time, one of the biggest quality which I find is the effective communication. How to make a transparent, effective communication to the... In COVID time, it was very, very uh, essential. In fact, in, in our organization, we had multiple webinars directly done by our CEO, MD himself, to all the people at, at a very, very fixed interval talking about what's happening in the organization, what's happening outside. So communication is one of the very, very effective quality of a, of a leader. Again, I can keep telling that being positive, honest, trustworthy, open to feedback. Uh, and another major quality if other than trust, if I go, is being empathetic. Empathetic with the people, empathetic with the customer, empathetic with the community. So it is it, it's, it, every, because they have to take decisions while taking decisions, look at the different stakeholders, put ourselves in that position and then take a decision. So you are to... Go straight to your pointed question of what is the essence of leadership. According to me, essence of leadership is balance. Balance is, when I say balance, it is a leader has to get things done. So there is a two things. One is task orientation and people orientation. How do I manage task as well as the relationship? A leader has to be strong, but at the same time, he cannot be rude. He has to maintain the balance. He has to be kind, but he cannot be weak. He has to be bold, but he should not be bully. He should be humble, but at the same time, he should not become timid. He should be proud, at the same time, he should not be arrogant. So how do I maintain a balance, carry people along with me is, is very, very important for a leader. He has to be at the ground and he has to be at the balcony. We call it, the, he should be in the dance as well as in the balcony. He should be in a position to shift positions and look at the actual things and, and take a decision. And to finally sum up, trust is one quality which differentiates a leader and many other qualities which I spoke about will get influenced if the trust is there. If trust is not there, many qualities, even if you have that will not help. So essence of leadership is balance and uh, developing a trust. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jekumar. I mean, that was really, uh, I thought very, very profound. I mean, talking about the essence of leadership as the ability to build trust, right? Because unless people, and here we're talking of tens of thousands of people trust you, then you're not able to get them, just going back to your first definition, getting things done through people, right? And I guess that's the essence of the difference between manager and leader. Manager can get things done, but leader get things done through trust, through balance, through the bigger picture. I think the other thing that came to my mind as you were speaking, you know, in PwC, we had done some research and we came out with these six paradoxes of leadership. I think you referred to that, where we said, for example, a leader has to be a humble hero, which means you need the humility to say, look, I don't know everything. I'm happy to learn from you yeah. uh, or to say I made a mistake. At the same time, the leader has to be the hero to inspire, right? You need someone who's a strategic executionist. So you need someone who thinks big, but has the ability to roll up sleeves and get things done. And I think the most interesting to me was the politician with integrity. So you need to have political savviness as a leader, but you need to have strong integrity which is where the, the ethical compass, the trust everything you spoke about comes in. So thank you for that. Uh, let me come to you, Shailesh. Um, I mean, in the course of your career, you work with different kinds of organizations, right? You work with multinationals, you work with Indian giants in their field, uh, conglomerates. What to you is the essence of leadership? And maybe if I could just request you also to touch on this whole aspect of how have you seen diversity in leadership? And in your view, has that really helped in increase the quality of leadership, collective leadership in an organization. So maybe if I could just request you to comment on that aspect as well. Sure, Padmanjar. Thank you for that. You know, I personally believe these are very pertinent questions 
and even more in a very changed environment. You know, so firstly, thank you to ETHR World for inviting me to join as a panelist at the Next Tech HR Summit and to speak on leadership because this is so, so important in, in the world that we live in. You know, when I look at this is that I have worked predominantly in global organizations. So even if they are of Indian origin, they were Indian MNCs. But if I have to look at the differences, and I'll start with that part of your question and then speak about the essence of leadership. The main difference to me, and there may be many others as well, is on the ability of the leader to embrace and adapt to diverse cultural nuances. More so because leaders to me, and a key essence of leadership is how do leaders channelize differences? The workplace today is different from the workplace just a few years ago. Demographic changes, generational differences, cultural differences, greater diversity at workplace. It's about how each leader helps to channelize these differences, differences in thought, differences in action. Because remember, it's an idea that sparks innovation. And it's this idea that gets generated through a heterogeneous thought process. So yes, so uh, organizations that may have a base only in a particular country may have a very different or need a very local thought process. Whereas across cultural organizations or global organizations that have a presence across different geographies or continents, would need to have a, a very different cross-cultural uh, nuance to, to leadership there. So that to me is very, very essential. But by and large, when I look at leadership here, Patmaja, the essence and traits of a good leader remains pretty much consistent across the globe because the world is flat. The world is becoming more virtual. The world is becoming agile. And so leadership in whichever market you might be is very, very consistent. And that is a leader needs to create a sense of direction and a rallying point around this direction. I think that's so, so important uh, about it. And a lot of it also is built on trust. You know, it's about leaders being able or giving the opportunity to, to the team to take those risks and place a safety net under the team if they fail. You know, leaders need to ensure that teams think bold. I'll tell you why, because when you look beyond, and this is also one of the differences between uh, organizations that are confined to probably a country and those that are probably um, more cross country in their, in their approach, it's about the fact that today, good leaders will enable their teams to be disruptive, disruptive in a positive sense, disruptive through their products and services because your product doesn't necessarily have a market. You're creating a product and you're creating a market at the same time. So it's about these positive disruptions that make a difference to your organization and leaders encourage the teams to do it. And finally, leaders to me have to let go of command and control that they are so used to through the authority of the structure. It's about inspiration, collaboration and engagement. You know, leaders have to lead by being part of that team, making a difference to the team by, you know, sharing credit and accepting failure. So these are some of the thoughts that I just wanted to share, uh, Padmaja, on the essence of leadership and, of course, uh, the subtle and difference and nuances of, of leaders across geographies. Thank you, Shailesh. I mean, some really uh, very powerful thoughts in there. A leader as a part of a team, leader as being the rallying point, creating a sense of direction, giving the safety net to fail. But I thought you also started with something that to me is very powerful, the whole point on the leader having the ability to embrace differences, right? I think as our organizations, society becomes so much more diverse, I think leadership as the ability to embrace differences uh, is a very powerful concept. So thanks to all three of you, I thought very, very, very uh, power powerful, very thought-provoking insights from all of you. So let me just move on to something which, of course, we've all just lived through, which is the last 10, 12 months of the pandemic and the impact that it's had. I think each of you referred to it. Um, at the end of the day, even for those of us who've been you know, in the workplace for decades and have seen different business cycles, this was the first time that we have seen something which is so multidimensional as a crisis, right? 
on one front, it's a biomedical crisis. It brings into question, you know, endangering health and safety of our loved ones, our employees, uh, our colleagues. It brings in elements, of course, about livelihoods, the impact on the economy. So there are just so many different dimensions, physical safety, business disruption, we have business continuity. So even if we've seen ups and downs in the past in different business cycles, I'm sure there was has been some learning that each of us has had. I know for myself, uh, being thrown into this in early March last year, there was just so much of revisiting what one knew, trying to figure out what is the right thing to do, and a lot of learnings which have been there, right? So as Shalesh said, maybe some things are timeless, but I'm, I'm sure there's been something that has been a learning. Yeah. So if I could just request each of you to just briefly share, maybe I'll start with you, Shailesh. Sure. But what would you say have been your one, maybe two key learnings in the last 10, 12 months, right? right. Which may have caused you to you know, rethink things that you knew earlier. Thanks, Padmaja. You know, this is so fresh in our minds. Um, frankly, the pandemic has changed uh, things for us in the world that probably no other event has done in many, many decades, probably after the world wars. Uh, I have two thoughts here, and this is my own personal experience. I personally believe in a situation like this where we had a pandemic looming large and we were faced with that each and every day. And this pandemic took a personal toll on a number of employees. Uh, it was not just about, about the virus. It was about new work models. And this new work models needed um, leaders to have a sense of empathy and humanness in their approach. Mm -hmm. um, while it has been spoken about in the past, I don't believe it was put to the test as much as it was in the last 10 months. Leaders needed to prioritize the health, the well-being, the wellness, and the safety of their teams. You know, to me, you cannot separate the professional and the personal pieces of life anymore. Both are integral to the same human being. And the two are getting even more integrated as we speak in ways that you know we cannot fathom anymore. You can bring out the best in your teams. And this is my personal experience. If you recognize the personal needs of your team, even if it means short-term dips in performance and productivity, you know, it's the flexibility that you'll have to offer uh, reducing the rigidity of the past you know, because I'll give you an example. This pandemic has been especially harsh on women employees who have had to manage kids at home, uh, aging or elderly parents, to keep the home running and still continue their work responsibility, driving the same level of productivity. It was, it was very, very difficult. A good leader will quickly recognize these complexities and learn to optimize. And this is where you'll also get you know, stickiness within the team to the organization and to that leader. That's one. The second is whatever we have assumed to be the norm or the standard has changed in ways that no one expected. Every aspect of status quo had been challenged. You know, the workplace was never the same. The workplace today has not become just more leaner and more agile, but it's become more virtual. Uh, all organizations may not move completely to a virtual model, but Leaders who can lead in a hybrid environment are leaders who will succeed tomorrow. And this hybrid environment needs you to trust your team and build trust within the team. And this is what will really, when I spoke about inspiration and not management, it's, this is what I was talking about. It's about leaders owning the destiny of the teams, coaching, developing, driving meaningful outcomes, but at the same time, drive productivity through greater flexibility. So these were my two thoughts that, you know, I wanted to share with you today. Thank you, Shalish. So interesting that uh, in a way it's very left brain and right brain, right? You have the whole digital virtual, but it's the humanist leader who's able to get the best in this situation. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Jai Kumar, your quick thoughts on learnings one, maybe two in the last 10 to 12 months. Yeah, thank you, Padmaja. See, before that, let me take a quick snapshot because you imagine an uh, organization like LNT where the whole 60% um, of the revenue comes from EPC construction, where there's a whole lot of migrant work mark, around 3 lakh workers at project sites spread over different locations. All of a sudden, there is a closed down, lockdown, and uh, there's a fear of virus, social distancing, apprehension, anxieties. Um, 
So first and foremost, it was on the as everybody, every organization went through the cash flow issue. Okay, and now the the entire expenses continues. You are. Uh, Um, salaries you are taking care of the higher charges your uh, labor camp and uh, entire payment has to continue but there is no inflow next is the in a project the time is the essence of the contract so if you have lost lockdown 1 lockdown 2 lockdown 3 3 months gone if it is in a one year project you have to complete all your work in the nine month project so again you have to put additional resources which goes for a cost overrun and customers also going through the same process so they are trying to renegotiate and various things happening at the and there was a uh, whole migrant worker and returned back to their own places so to remobilizing thing and, and so looking at all these things uh, what i felt the the thing is three important point is one is agility in decision making quick decision uh, once once there is a pandemic when there is such a situation which, which is out of control there are three type of uh, response one is fight flight or freeze okay the the suboptimal response would be freezing in the place thinking that things will become all right then we will start the operations okay that that will that will uh, that is not the right way to do it it will make uh, the situation worse leaders should act quickly they need to take decisions rational decision but they may not have much of a data but whatever with available data and are we in a position to take decision decision may go wrong but we will reverse that decision no problem but could you take the the decision we have to put plans but at the same time we should be ready to shift gears and change the decision so first for me one is agility in decision making is very very important thing which i learned in in this uh, don't wait for data data analysis it will become data analysis paralysis but available data intuition okay, look at the views of different people take quick decision next very very important thing is communicate often but un early immediate you have a fixed schedule for communication call up whether it is webinar whether it is newsletters whether it is uh, through in uh, a formal informal channel but communicate very very tra- transparently and inform what is happening so that there is a lot of noise outside so it 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 boomerangs and it creates into a different uh, thing so it is very very important that to communicate what is happening what actions are being taken where are we and how are we going to proceed even if nothing has happened in a fixed schedule just call them and say nothing has happened so that the people that anxiety levels are are uh, less mm-hmm. and if it is and even if it is a difficult thing we have to call a spade a spade and we have to do that third with three things i will stop third is leading with compassion and at with all the pandemic with all these things we have not we we, we have looked at every opportunity to see how to take care of the people we have not terminated any of the people just for the sake of pandemic we try to bring in some additional insurance schemes we tend to health safety etc wherever possible work from homes and and leading with compassion looking at different people for a leader it may be the business uh, nurse achieving the targets as well as looking at the the business continuity etc but at the same time you have to look at the people side of it uh, there are different types of people at, like silesh said people have health concern they have they some people are scared about their jobs somebody has got the aged parents at home so different type of people different priorities are there so leading with compassion empathetic leadership is the third so uh, one is um, agility in decision making communicate 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 and that to very, very transparent honest communication to to then is leading with compassion that is empathy that the three three broad areas which i would like Which I learned that is required to to be successful. No, thank you so much I for saw, that. I saw that happening in the organization. Okay, and you know the first one that you said is actually so interesting. We all talk about agility and ability to take risks, but at a time when you really don't know what the next week or the next day is going to bring, to have the courage of conviction to say that look, based on available information, this is what I would do, and if I need to quickly change track, I would. do that and you know to be able to steer so many people in a different track it requires leadership of a different caliber right so that's a very uh, you know interesting and important point that you brought out uh, and i think the role in the hr function making this happen is something which actually has come to the fore in such a big way right i think well much more than anything it was before so kostub i would love to get your thoughts on the same thing uh, one 
learnings that you had in the pandemic on the whole aspect of leadership. But maybe if I can request you to also bring in the whole nuance from not just the HR function. I know that you also handle other functions, including CSR, right? I think Dr. Jaikumar spoke about the impact on larger society as well. So any learnings from your side, not just from the HR side, but from the other functions that you look at as well. Yeah, sure, Padmaya. I think, uh, you know, I would look at this as, uh, you know, adversity always brings out, uh, you know, is somewhere it brings out the best in people. It is somewhere where, you know, you always have uh, the birth of innovation always happen at the back of uh, adversity. And uh, I, I think this one, one year has seen a lot of transition and a transformational transition, you, you know, a, a transformation in, in the way we have actually dealt with this uh, and the way we have transformed. So the digital India is a dream. If you look at it, it's it's actually seen it, uh, you know, in in some form come come to come to life. The corporate India has also experienced that. The way we connect today, the speed at which we can connect, the the ability to reach out to anybody. Today we are doing this 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 whole meeting online, and I think this is this is the whole transition which has happened, uh, where today digitization, uh, digital India, wherein the penetration into rural India has also increased today. I guess when we are uh, the 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 whole e-commerce piece, the the place where you know you are the connected world. I guess is happening today. You can reach out to people uh, world over if you want to do a leadership summit. Uh, the second thing which I think which happened is uh, you know the whole talent which was sitting at home is tapped. The ability to for an organization to tap uh, talent which is currently was sitting at home was not in the open is is available and you can actually you can you can actually tap that talent and move forward so employability i guess will increase over a period of time because you your your reach will increase and the third thing the work from home which was never a culture in india which was which was is is become a norm and today uh, when whenever we are looking at uh, any corporate they are talking about how do we actually create a great work from home uh, you know policy how can we actually look at productivity for people from the? I think these are very, very strong uh, transition uh, tra uh, the, the things which have come out of this pandemic. On the CSR front, if you look at there are there are certain communities which were which are like we worked very very much on the third gender. The transgender actually were the most affected. We were a lot of people have spoken about migrant workers. A lot of people have spoken about about several uh, loss of jobs and 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 maybe women, but I guess this was a time when women actually came into the forefront. And in, it was a time when I, you see a lot more women leaders. There, this was a time when, uh, you know, it, when we saw a lot more of women NGOs, which have come forward and helped communities across India. If I were to look at it, you know, uh, we worked that there were, there were issues, health issues, uh, the, the menstrual hygiene issues, which we addressed. There was the transgender issue that we have just, the skilling, the skill India movement, which was there, has has actually taken it's it's grown 32 percent in the last one year, which is huge. When you skill, you have skilling happening at the at the grassroots level. The more farm, farmers are getting connected, they are getting trained. So I guess this is what we uh, that was a huge learning. The transgenders actually uh, lost their livelihood totally. What uh, you know, that's when you we we picked up the whole agenda of training them. We picked up the agenda of actually skilling them. Making sure that they they so they, they were entrepreneurs. They were about at least I am uh, you know I'm I know of at least sixteen entrepreneurial ventures which were come out which came out of this wherein there were not only there was dairy there was farming there was food trucks uh, which we actually funded and make made sure that people so there was this whole transition. Imagine somebody coming out of flesh trade and doing dairy farming. It is it is a sense of sense of uh, you know that sense of happiness. The sense of pride that one gets. I think that has been a very a, a silver lining in this whole pandemic. I would yes, there mm -hmm. have been times when we actually had to struggle. Uh, of course, we worked around with the Mumbai police, the hospitals, the health workers, and and of course the donations keep coming. But I guess working at the grassroots, what was the real kick? And and I think that the sense of empathy, the sense of work, uh, you know, the the whole that you saw leaders coming from nowhere and actually becoming uh, role models in this time. And I think that's that. those are three or four huge learnings out of this one. So that is so uplifting. Uh, you know, I think from what all of you have spoken about, you've spoken about leading compassion, empathy, 
And you've also brought this dimension, Kasut, that it's not only within the organization, but it's to larger society. And I'm just thinking that you know, uh, the role that all our organizations have, right, is so large. And in our country, if we have the corporate sector becoming, you know, bring, leading with more empathy, with more compassion, not just for internal constituents, but external as well, that's such an uplifting and powerful role, right? And uh, maybe we just have much more of responsibility to those who are not as privileged as us at the, as a result of this. I see that a lot even among all our colleagues where everybody wants to see, how can I help as an organization? What are you doing? What are the programs? How can I contribute? So I think we are seeing, we will see such a big gain to society as a whole bring in that element in all our organizations. All right, so that's been a very, very fascinating discussion. Thank you all for your perspectives. Maybe if I can just request each of you in you know, just a minute, maybe the last question from me, uh, as we kind of leave this discussion and turn our eye on the future and do a bit of crystal ball gazing, because if there's one thing we've learned in the last 10 months is plan, but be prepared that your plan would be completely disrupted, right? And could go in completely different directions. So as we look ahead, um, I guess my question to you, maybe I'll start with Bukostub is, do you think the leadership requirements would be the same or would they change? And if they change, maybe just very quickly, in what way? So I do think, you think uh, the future would be the same, the requirements be the same? I think a leader is a leader, but the leader in adverse conditions and who has led well, I think the whole the whole definition of leader doesn't change, I believe. I, I don't think the leader doesn't change. But our, the, the way we look at leadership is what has actually made it far more crystal clear. It is it has actually made you differentiate between a Tendulkar and a Dhoni. You really need to look at whether what is what is it that you are looking at uh, in a leader. I think we, the people, the organizations, the country, the pe the, uh, the, uh, the individuals have actually now sent the sense of recognizing a leader is now changed. The second thing is, you know, uh, I think it's also come out that diversity, women make a better leaders, women make far more better, uh, you know, I think the whole shift from, you know, that women really today, I believe that women have come out in this whole piece as real genuine leadership, uh, you know, and, and, and I believe that today, going forward, you'll see a far, you'll see far more diversity, not only uh, in on boards, but also in various leadership positions. I guess these are the things which we, we have realized. Which and uh, because, because that's where they bring in that, that kind of uh, multifaceted personality, multi-skilled individual. I think those are the things that we see. The ability to manage adversity, ability to manage complex situations. I think, uh, I think that those are the things which, which, which really came forward. And, and I think uh, uh, it's far more clear to us than who is who and what kind of person we require at the helm. Okay. So what you're saying then is that the fundamentals of leadership will not change, but we're going to see far more focus on ensuring that we have the right leaders and a lot more focus on identifying and defining what we need, right? Because it matters now more than ever. Shalesh, uh, your view, yeah. will the fundamentals, would there be any change? If so, which are the elements that you see changing? So, uh, Patmanja, I firmly believe that the while the essence of leadership will remain the same, there an oh, an emphasis on certain traits of a leader will probably get overemphasized or need to be overemphasized in, um, you know, in a in a world that probably brings in a lot more uncertainty and ambiguity. And there are four points that I wanted to uh, share and very very briefly. The first is a leader would definitely need to lead in a hybrid environment. I spoke about this, a virtualized leadership model. This is here to stay. The second is about building trust. I think that is paramount. Uh, there, there needs to be even greater trust built in the team and within the teams uh, in, in an environment that we are in today. The third is, which is so important, is leaders need to be excellent learners themselves and instill in their teams the confidence to learn each and every day. The fourth is, which I think is so important, is, is about risk-taking. You know, a world that we are in needs risk-takers and not just, you know, wild risk-takers. I'm talking about calculated gambles, intelligent gambles, because you may, may not always be successful, but you will be 
a lot more successful if you're able to take those calculated gambles with very clear lines of communication, less ambiguity, and more definition in what you want to achieve. Thank you. So uh, what you're saying is that while fundamentally it would be the same, certain elements would really have to be come into more emphasis. And yeah. in some ways, it links to the point that Dr. Jekamor also made about that whole agility, ability to take risk. And then you also spoke about the tech-savvy humanist, right? Yes. Humanist yet in the tech-savvy digital era. Thanks, Shailesh. Uh, Dr. Jaykumar, your thoughts on this closing yeah. question? Yeah, I, I agree. We fully agree with Shailesh. Uh, but I remember of a term which I read a couple of uh, months back, ambidextrous leadership. Mm -hmm. okay. So so they say that while the leader uh, has a great leader has to be ambidextrous, while they execute whatever their existing business, at the same time, he should reflect on the current paradigm in this VUCA world, understand the writing on the wall, look at the paradigm shifts happening externally, and should find ways which fundamentally manage the large scale change. If, if that is not in the back of the mind of the leader, and if he keeps focusing on the existing, he will be washed away. But any point of time, any point of time, because we have been attending seminars and talking about VUCA world and other things, but never thought such a jolt we will have in our lifetime, right? So this this pandemic has created a lot. So looking at the qualities, I, I find some of the qualities which, which distills out and coming is being calm, composed and confident at a time of adversity. If you become panic at the time of uh, uh, that pandemic, that day, first month or second month, what to do? To the, 3 lakh workers, so much of staff, so much of vendors, everything in a standstill, and you have to be calm, composed, get whatever the data, take it. Next is empathetic leadership, which I spoke about. Communication, continuous communication, transparent, authentic communication. To, to And what Sally said, I empower teams, I'm not only uh, empower people, um, empower teams, as well as virtual uh, uh, teams, bring in and once you have different teams, you need to have effective collaboration. That is, becomes a part and parcel of that. And what I found is digital mindset, technological mindset or digital adaptation is very much important today because of the changes, competition and because of to bring down the risk and bring down the cost. So a leader has to be have a digital uh, mindset. And whether it is relevant in terms of uh, this session or not, but one learning I found is whether it is a home, whether it is a small organization, big organization, conserve cash. Cash is the key. Otherwise, you are you are you are out. That these are some of the learnings which I got from the whole whole. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jaykumar, Kostub, Shailesh. I think we couldn't have asked for a better discussion, right? I think each of you brought so many valuable perspectives to the table. It was such a good complementarity of views. I mean, you reinforced some aspects, but I think so many different dimensions came out and that could only have come from the so many years of rich experience that each of you has had in different backgrounds. Uh, I have had so much of learning. I think we spoke about so many different dimensions of leadership, right? Starting with what is all the different traits of the leader, the ability, the head, heart, guts, if I oversimplify, solution, empathy, compassion, which all of you spoke about so much, and courage, right? So clearly, a leader needs to have all of these elements. But if at all, in VUCA times, if the head has to take a bit of a down step, because you say that, look, I can never have all the facts, but I need courage to be able to take that decision and move ahead. I think we spoke about the need for a leader to build trust. I think uh, the ethical compass the feeling that the leader would do the right thing for the organization, for larger society, that expectation is coming up, which is a very progressive step. And I think all of us in our own organizations are clearly looking at how do we equip leaders to be able to build trust, because that is clearly a non-negotiable. The aspects of embrace differences, how do we, at the end of this, have more inclusive organizations, right? Where we have not only diversity, but we also, as leaders, ensure that we are embracing differences and we really bring to the fore different points of view. I think in a VUCA world, you need all points of view and unless we embrace the differences, we cannot get them to the table. The term humanist has been spoken about a lot and to me, that's very uplifting. It speaks about a more compassionate organization, compassionate society. And maybe I think the term that you spoke about, Dr. Jakumar, ambidextrous. I, I was just recollecting that uh, CEO that I used to work with, he said, 
sometimes I almost feel schizophrenic, right? I have to sit and say that today, is it my strategy day? Is it my execution day where I start getting very, very granular on detail or am I thinking five years? So yes, it is leadership paradoxes where the expectation from a leader is that depending on the context, you have to shift those hats. It's not easy, but maybe times like this have put even more pressure on that. So with that, let me bring the session to a close. Uh, thanking every one of you for your time and you know just so much of rich perspectives that you all shared. Thank you. Thank you, panelists, for the detailed discussion. Stay tuned and keep tweeting using the hashtag ETHRNextTech.